Welcome fellow geometers to another video lesson. As you can see, I'm decked out in my triangle gear, my I Love Triangle shirt, my I Love Triangle hat. At this moment in our uh, geometry careers, we've been successful with right triangles. But the question is, it's inevitable, what if it isn't a right triangle? What do we do then? It's alright, we can fix this. There's two laws that extend trigonometry. One is called the law of sines, the other one is called the law of cosines. Let's look at the law of sines first. The law of sines simply says for any triangle, ABC, looking at side A, looking at side B, and looking at side C, there's a relationship between them that simply says this. If you take the sine of any angle, let's case A, over the side that's opposite, it will be proportional to the sine of any other angle that you choose over the side that's opposite that one. And that would then follow suit that then it would be proportional to the sine of C, which is opposite side C. Using this law of sines, we can find sides, we can find angles of any triangle, whether it's right triangle or a non-right triangle. Using the law of sines to find a side is pretty simple. Looking at X, I know I need to involve the angle that's opposite x, so let's start there. The sine of 102 is to x as the sine of 57 is to 14. Once I have this proportional relationship, we've learned that to solve a proportion, we cross multiply. So 14 times the sine of 102, x times the sine of 57, To get x by itself, I'm going to do the opposite of multiplication. I'm going to divide. At this moment, I would then break out my calculator, and I'd go 14 times the sine of 102, divide by the sine of 57, and we should get 16.3. I could also use the law of sines to find an angle. Looking at x in this corner, I know I need to involve the side that's opposite x, which in this case would be 16. With the law of sines, it says the sine of x is to 16 as the sine of 54 is to 21. Now, just like with every trick that we've used, when we're asking to find an angle, we have to activate the inverse operation. That will not change, we'll have to do that at the end as well. So first things first, let's cross multiply. Let's try and get x by itself, so we're going to have to do that by dividing by 21. So systematically just get it by itself. this moment, we know that we cannot take the sine of x, and this is where we're going to use the inverse operation. That is a mouthful. But if I take the inverse operation, we all know that what happens behind the scenes is that x reverts to this side, and that comes to this side. So in one step in my calculator, but be careful, I would have to take the inverse sine of 16 times the sine of 54 over 21 and then get my angle, and try that on your calculator, you should get 38.1 degrees. Now that's the law of sines to find a side and an angle, but there is the inevitable situation of, what if I don't have enough information to use the law of sines? What if I have three sides and no angles, or I have one angle, but I don't have the side opposite? That's going to be where we have to use the other law. As you can see, the law of cosines is a little bit more intricate. It involves all the sides, and you're going to see that it involves the angle opposite the one I started with. Specifically, whichever side I start with squared, that is equal to the other two sides squared, minus 2 times the other sides, 
times the cosine of the angle opposite the side I started with. So I'm going to take the cosine of A because I started with A. Now we can change this for any side that we start with. Let's say we start with B. B squared would be equal to either A squared plus C squared or C squared plus A squared. It doesn't matter because addition is commutative. Minus 2 times those other sides times the cosine of the angle opposite the side I started with. So if I started with side B, then I'm going to take the cosine of B. And going on from there and there. So let's try and find a side. I must start with x because it involves the angle opposite x. So in this case, if I start with x squared, that is equal to the other two sides squared minus 2 times the other sides times the cosine of the angle opposite the side I started with. One more time, whichever side you start with squared, that is equivalent to the other two sides squared minus 2 times the other sides times the cosine of the angle opposite the one that we started with. Now, please excuse my dear side, maybe in your calculator, but be careful. This is addition and then that turns to multiplication. So as I punch this in my calculator and slowly deduce it, if that needs to be, if I go 36, 196, 168, and then slowly come down, I know at the very end I'm taking the square root of all that, and that side is going to come out to be 17.5. And then I would look at that and see if it makes sense. Does it make sense in my problem? Last but not least, we want to find the angle using the law of cosines. And again, if I want to involve x, which in this case I do, then I need to start with the side that's opposite x. So in this case, I'm going to go 10 squared is 12 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 12 times 15 times the cosine of the angle opposite 10, which in this case would be the cosine of x. And again, when I'm asked to find an angle, I know I'm going to be utilizing the inverse operation. Well, this one we're going to have to really get it down to where we need to go. 24 times 15. Again, start getting out your calculator. That's 360. You are going to be very tempted to subtract these numbers. But we cannot because it's involved with multiplication. So I have to move the 269 over. I have no choice. And at this point, you may lose a little confidence, but you're okay. We can do this. Divide by negative 360. Remember, I want to get x as closely by itself as possible. And again, now I would utilize inverse. I would take the inverse cosine of that. And again, negative over negative is positive, so we're okay. And using my calculator, I'm going to get an angle. That's 41.6. So now that's it. We're triangle experts. Whether it's a right triangle or an oblique triangle, I can find the sides or angles of anything with trig, law of sines, and the law of cosines. That's a wrap.